lovelies, so I am not feeling well, so I thought I would crack open the camera and just talk at you. Come here, Belle. Are you kind of in the... Can you sit down and be in the video? Yeah, and let's snuggle and just have a chat with our friends. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that, like, I just... I don't know, it keeps running across my mind, and... It's this one thing I said in a video a long time ago, and I didn't have much, much viewership at the time, but um, it's something that I is interlocked with something that keeps on coming up in my life, and I just feel like it's laid on my heart for a reason, and maybe it will resonate with someone. And it's this fact that we as people, as kind people at least, we all the time I feel like compare ourselves to other people. And I know this is in like lots of different areas, but I'm just going to mainly talk about illness. So it's always like, you know, my friends without say some of my symptoms are always like, I shouldn't complain because you, you know, you, you're going through so much more. And it's like, no, complain. Like, we all need to vent. And I couldn't really find the words to say that in a more concrete way. So there's sympathizing and there's empathizing. And we learn from such a young age what those two words mean. And it's like, if you haven't gone through the experience or whatever it might be, you can't empathize with someone. So the thing is, is that a lot of people with either unknown diagnosis or they just never are going to find a diagnosis or things like fibro or mental illness or things that kind of have a stigma attached to it, a lot of people with that say, I, I'd rather have cancer. I wish I had cancer. And it seems to someone, because we all have someone that we know that has died from cancer or is affected with cancer. And it's when someone says that statement, it's like they punch you in the heart. But as someone that struggles with a chronic illness, I can empathize with other people that are chronically ill that make that statement. I, however, have never had cancer. So when, I, when someone says something like, I'd rather have cancer, and it feels like that punch in your heart, and for someone that actually has cancer, how awful that must feel, we don't know that. Like we, I was just thinking about this because like, I was, I feel like I'm coming down with a cold and it's like, I've talked about this before on my channel when I've been ill and it's like, I've already, I'm on, already chronically ill. So have all these symptoms that are just awful and then to be sick on top of being sick, it just is awful. So then when I get rid of the sickness and I go back to just fibro is what I laughably say. I feel like, oh my gosh, like, thank goodness, <laughs> like, that's gone. But I think that until we experience something, statements like that, you can't take them too seriously and be too hard on people because I'm sure if I had had cancer and I had, um, you know, and this is just me saying this because I haven't had cancer, so I can't empathize, but I sympathize. I'm sure if I have had gone through cancer and beat it, I wouldn't say, I wish I had cancer. And if you're wondering the reason that people with chronic illnesses like this or mental illness say, I, I would rather have cancer, is because people are, that's a, because we have an idea that that is a valid illness and that mental illness and things that are a little bit unclear or have to do with the brain, like fibromyalgia or ME or chronic fatigue syndrome, um, those ones are not valid in like society's mind. Um, and still some doctors that don't do their research or continue their education um, don't think that they're valid. So it's said out of desperation and it's said because of the sentiment behind it, not because the person actually wants cancer. Um, 
but I, I see how people find it offensive, but I also see how what is meant by that. And when I got to think thinking about that, I really thought about how I was talking to Leanne about this. We all have our own struggles, and until we go through something worse, that's our worst. That that's our baseline for like this is the worst thing that could ever happen to me. Um and that's our struggle. That's our reality. So when we look at somebody else and say, oh my gosh, Emily has fibro and she has mental illness and she has asthma and like she does, her immune system is compromised and she has all that stuff on top of it and I just have depression. Like, I shouldn't complain about this. And it's like, no, because you have no idea what my struggles are. You don't know what it feels like. You don't, you, you haven't experienced that. So how can you come compare what you're struggling with with what I'm struggling with because you can't empathize. So to each of us, our struggle is less important or more important, however we see it. In my, in my experience, I always think that mine is less. Like I'm always like, oh my gosh, I'm complaining, I'm whining, and there's people that have cancer out there, and there's people that have this and that, and you know, uh, you know, have all these awful things. And then there, then people always come and they're like, I can't believe you're doing as well as you are, and you're that sick. And I'm like, oh yeah, I really am, really sick, like really, really, really sick. Um, so that's been an interesting experience especially on YouTube like that's one of those things that's been very validating is because I kind of brush it off which you ca you have to sometimes like sometimes you're just like yep yeah, I'm being crazy um, and I legitimately am crazy like I have depression and anxiety and <sighs> OCD thinking and you know it just is a long laundry list okay <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is your path in life and your struggles are just as valid as any other person on this earth. And that's what can make us connect with one another. If we start putting this scale of who's more important and less important, that's when we disconnect from each other and think, I can't even comprehend what you're going through. So I'm going to just ignore it because I can't handle that. So I think I really want to do a video. Maybe I'll try to like interview my friends when they're less busy because my friends are amazing at this and I don't know how they do it. Put up with me pretty much. And I know that sounds very self-deprecating, but I mean it in the most positive way possible because as I've said numerous times, I wouldn't be able to be with my friends with myself. And I'm a very caring, compassionate person. I'm a counselor. I worked in the field as a counselor and teacher teacher to violent and um, just very emotionally distraught teens. And that was my career. And I loved the death out of them. And they abused me. And I still loved them. And um, so I'm a very caring person. And I, but at the same time, I just, in honest moment, I wouldn't be friends with myself. So I always look at my friends and think, that's what I think when I see my friends. Like, I just want to, like, stare at them and, like, understand them. Because they've gotten past it. And they, they don't know. Like, they're not going through what I'm going through. My three best friends... And my fourth really close friend, none of them are ill, like at all. Like some of them, they barely even get colds. So, I mean, they're all in very caring fields and want to do really great things in this world. And um, very, you know, like Aaron is very motherly and just very caring. And Monica wants to work with um in the corrections field which is a very difficult field to work in and my friend Lynn's wants to be um working with uh as a substance abuse counselor that's i mean that's really caring really really caring 
Um, and then my, my other best friend, Alicia, wants to be a missionary. Like, like these people are wonderful people. So it's not like I'm like, what are these people? They're so cruel, but yet they're kind to me. No, but it's just like, I am a kind person, but I wouldn't be able to be friends with me. So I don't get it <laughs> because I can't connect with that. So I always want to know, how do you connect with me and get past what I consider complaining and whining and having to cancel at the last minute and all these things that I have to deal with that I can't imagine somebody else dealing with them and not even being ill. So I think that when, but, well, but the one thing is, is that I know in my friendships, when my friend calls me, say like, hmm, let me think of something. Say, say, I'm like gonna completely just make up something right now and just use Lindsay. Sorry, Lindsay, you're real, my best friend, but I'm gonna completely make something up. Okay, so say Lindsay meets a guy. She's like totally infatuated with him, loves him, blah, blah, blah. They break up. She calls me crying. Well, she could think in her mind, like, I'm not going to call Emily because she has so much on her plate. She's so sick. She's disabled. Like, maybe she's having a bad night. And, like, my breakup, like, I'm not going through any, like, physical pain. And, like, I don't want to put that on her. And, like, my pain is not the same as hers. Like, this whole process could go through her mind. But that would make me feel awful. Like, I would be like, girl, you better call me. Like, if you go through something like that, I mean, that's what friends are for. Like, I, that struggle to me is just as valid as, like, what? Okay, like, let's say she dated him for four months. That's just as valid as every symptom I've gone through in the past four months. And I think that by, by leveling the plane, that's what makes you able to connect with one another. And to both feel valid in a friendship because you can't, you can't call someone and unload on them and feel you're either superior. Like if, for instance, if that's the case, say I feel my issues are superior to Lindsay's and her dating situation. If she called me, I would feel resentful. Why didn't she ask me about how I'm feeling? Why didn't she ask me before she called if it's all right if she calls me? Like, I, there, that's what happens. And that's what breaks down friendships. And that's what breaks down hearts. Because that can get you to a very, very lonely place. And then flipping the coin, it can make your friends feel very um, isolated and alone if they do that to themselves. Like, if they say, oh, well, like... I don't want to call Emily because she has so much going on with her health and so I'm just gonna like sit here and try to deal with this by myself that's not what we're made for we're made for fellowship and connections and to be able to talk to one another and that's why your comments mean so freaking much to me and I know I talk about this in like every video and you guys are probably like shut up already we get it but honestly it does like it it means so much to me because I didn't know it would happen and it just is this fellowship that uh, I just appreciate so much because it's so many people from different walks of life people that like my subscription boxes people that are have fibro people that have cancer people that are sick people that have mental illness and we all come together and have this conversation and have such kindness to one another and I like that that is leveling the plane that people that come and watch my channel you don't have to be sick to watch it you can come and just laugh and I get that from people that are sick that say on my sick days you're my this is my app you're my absolute per favorite person to watch like I sit there because I do long videos and if someone it takes their mind off of it and makes them laugh. That's what I wanted to do with this channel. I have people that are completely healthy that say, I had a really crummy day. I watched your video and you made me giggle and you brightened my day. That is what I wanted to do with this. 
I didn't realize until maybe six months into this project, <laughs> like I'm going to be honest with you, but once I did, that's what really happened and that's what blossomed from it. And I just think it is the coolest thing ever. Your struggle is just as valid as my struggle, as your neighbor's struggle, as your best friend's struggle. Everybody's struggle is the worst thing that they're going through. That's all that you guys know. It's all that we know. We can't compare it to something else other than intellectually, but our hearts are what's at the core of what we feel and say and do. Let's be honest. So like I can know that like someone with, I don't know, burns all over their body is experiencing more pain than I am. But I don't know what that means to my body. To me, I'm experiencing the worst pain that I know or that I've experienced. So a person that it doesn't have fibro but maybe has depression, that's the worst pain that they know and are experiencing. And I think it's time for us to validate our own experience and our own struggle as being important and that our happiness is important. And if we're not going, we, we're always going through some sort of struggle. There's always something. I know that a lot of you are like unhappy, everything's perfect in my life, you're in denial. There's always something, but it might just be in the background or it might be something that you, you're you just at the end of your journey of working out and it's at a happy place. But there will be other struggles in your life and things that come up and they're just as valid as the person sitting next to you or the person commenting or the person talking to you right now. And I just love your faces off and I am so honored to share this journey with you of life because that's really what it's come about. This project is called My Life with Chronic Pain and it's really turned into my life. That's about as original as I could get. Was that too simple? But that's really what it is. And it's sharing, it's like almost like our life. Like it's, it's everybody's experiencing meshing together and learning from one another and leaning on one another. And I just think it's so important to make those friendships and connections wherever you can. A lot of people are like, well, you know, I don't really have friends. And I'm like, well, who do you talk to? And they're like, well, there are people online I talk to. And I'm like, so you have friends. Like, it doesn't matter if the person lives in Alaska and you live in New Zealand and you guys email each other. You're still friends just because you haven't met face to face. Emily Lowe and I were friends for almost a year. And I, like, I, everyone I talked to, they were like, oh, you're really good friends with Emily Lowe. And I'm like, yeah, I was. But I had never met her face to face. We did a challenge together. We did a no makeup challenge. We did... Um, we can connect all the time. We talk about hair. She's done. I've, I think every single person I know has gone to her to get her, their hair done. And, um, I love her to pieces and I just recently met her, but it did, it did not change our relationship at all. Like I still view her exactly the same. She was exactly the same as I expected her to be. We got along great. And then we just continued with our friendship and it was a ball. But other people, like my sister that I've been, she's been my sister for, I don't know, six years or something. I've never met her and I don't have plans to meet her. I hope that I meet her one day, but that doesn't change that like I consider her my sister and that's it. And I struggle with this with her is because she doesn't feel like a lot of things she goes through are valid like she feels like oh well my knee just hurts and your whole body hurts so I'm not gonna like call you and talk about it and it's so frustrating because it is it's very important and she needs me to like that's what sisters are for um so she does usually break down and tell me but um yeah I just think this is so important just sharing life and um being authentic and real and 
ah, just getting comments from you guys that you appreciate how honest and like authentic I am, I think have been those ones like really I like yeah, they melt my heart. Like I have to be honest. They get me they get me right here. Wait. They get me right here. Oof, yeah. It's really important to me because this project is so close to ending. I mean, I can't believe it. Like, it feels like I just started it, like, a week ago. Um, I'm getting, like, very sentimental about it, but it's just been really important to me. And uh, some of you have reached out to me and have said, you know, please, like, continue doing this. And, like, I really, like... I like seeing you every day or you know I watch your videos like once a week and I get my fill or I do marathons of you and that's how I feel about you guys so it's a very like I don't know how to explain it but it's it's the way you guys feel is the same way I feel about interacting with you guys even though I'm not getting like videos even though I do private videos with some of you so like don't just forget those people but the rest of you like when you comment on my videos or watch a video subscribe to me or whatever it is I see you and I see the views and I know that people are watching and the people that comment and or give a thumbs up or whatever it is that has to do with YouTube I don't know it means so much to me because there's an interaction there's an exchange and it's real and it's positive and it means a lot to me so I do get really sentimental about this project and that's all I'm gonna say because someone asked a question it's gonna be in my Q&A but I have to work on my Q&A because I have to cut down some of the questions or else it'll be like an eight hour video because I got so many questions and um, I'm really excited but I don't know I just really wanted to talk to you guys about that and um, I don't know if any of it made sense like I don't even know if like 30 minutes 30 seconds of that made sense so but that's how painful hilarity works so good job me I hope you guys are having a pain free stress free day sending out x double o's and as always I will talk to all of you tomorrow